Hey, what's up? It's Spencer Ryan. One of the most requested videos that I get on a daily basis is my desk setup tour. And that's why I'm really excited for 2021 to show you a dual desk setup tour. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I have two different desks for two different purposes. This is my work from home productivity MacBook Pro docking station. And then I have another desk setup, which was actually featured in the 2020 desk setup tour, which is for gaming now and for streaming. And yes, I am streaming casually now, so make sure you go follow me on Twitch if that's your thing. But let's go ahead and dive right into the desk setup tour, the dual desk setup tour, starting with this one. So I think it makes the most sense to go ahead and start with the desk. This is a reclaimed wood sit stand desk from Stand Desk. And it's a really nice desk. It looks great. It gets a lot of eyes over on Instagram. A lot of people ask what this is. Now this is not solid reclaimed wood. These are reclaimed wood pieces on top. And then it's also built with plywood underneath. But it's a really nice desk making for a really good look. One thing I will say about this desk is there is a lot of filler material. So don't be surprised if you were to go pick this up. If you see a bunch of black filler material in it, it is normal and it is part of the process. Next, we've got a dual 4K monitor set up. These are Dell U2718 Qs. I really like these monitors. They have USB ports on them and I didn't want to go with an ultra wide because I didn't want to sacrifice the vertical pixel space. So these are two 4K monitors and I have them set up to be one on my MacBook Pro. I've actually taken the wallpaper and inverted it so that it kind of looks like one gigantic wallpaper. Overall, I like these monitors. They're great monitors. They don't really have any good HDR support, but that's okay because I don't typically work in HDR, but I do love the colors, the panels, everything about them feels really nice. The only thing I'll say is ever since coronavirus pandemic happened, the prices have surged, especially because these are no longer made. So you would be spending anywhere around $550 to $600 on one of these monitors. Because of that price point, I think that there may be others out there that you could get that are a better deal. I just happen to really like these. Supporting the monitors are the Grove made wooden walnut desk shelf. It is an awesome desk shelf. It makes a lot of use of space. If I didn't have the monitor sitting on it and had them on an arm, I'd have even more space, but I really like the way this works. It has two shelves over here and on this bottom shelf, there is the Grove made uh, desk shelf tray actually, which is meant to fit under here. I've got my AirPods Pro in here, a knife, a couple EDC things, some pens. It's a great little tray. And then on this side, this underneath space is actually where I keep my MacBook Pro. This is a 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro Core i9 with 32 gigabytes of RAM and an AMD graphics card in it. And the bad boy that basically puts this entire setup together is the A-Logic 10-in-1 Super Dock. This Super Dock allows me to do dual monitors, 4K, 60 Hertz over HDMI because these monitors do not support Thunderbolt. It also has an SD card reader, a micro SD card reader, two USB 3.0 ports, a 100 watt pass-through charging ability, and a USB-C port, as well as an ethernet port on the back end. There's a lot of functionality out of this super dock. I love it. It's portable. I you know, I could take it, throw it in my bag, whatever I need to do. It has a lot of punch for such a small device. For the input and output devices, we've got the Quirky Writer Bluetooth Mechanical Typewriter Keyboard. Everyone always asks me all the time, what is that keyboard? What is that keyboard? It is the typewriter keyboard from Quirky Writer with blue mechanical switches in it. I really like using this keyboard. I think it matches the entire vibe. As a matter of fact, we named this setup Cabin Fever because of its vibe. It's such a warm cabin feel, cozy, and I think the typewriter really adds along to that. It doesn't actually feel like a typewriter. It feels like a normal mechanical keyboard, but it looks really cool. It's got a volume knob, a scroll wheel, and it's wireless, which is a huge plus for me because I don't like having wired keyboards. For the mouse, I am using the Logitech MX Master 2S. This is one of my favorite mice out there. They do have the MX Master 3, but I like the look of the 2S better. And because this has three wireless profiles, I actually use it for both setups. I bounce back and forth. When I'm working, I use it over here. And when I'm gaming, I'll use it over there. Supporting my wrist while I'm using the mouse is the Delta Hub Carpio. This was actually featured in last year's setup 
tour, but it's a really nifty device. It just sits under your palm and it helps you prevent carpal tunnel syndrome. I highly recommend it. Underneath all of this is the Grove Made leather mouse pad with pen holder. It holds my favorite pen. I tend to lose pens a lot, so it's nice to be able to have a spot to put my pen. On the top here, we have the A-Logic 3-in-1 wireless charger. I really love wireless chargers. I pretty much stopped using wired chargers on my phone last year, late last year. I'm addicted to the wireless charging experience. I don't wanna use MagSafe. I don't wanna use cables anymore. So I really like having this here because it lets me just easily set my phone down while I'm working or my AirPods. I can just charge them while I'm getting some work done, pick it up, put it down whenever I need to. It is really a nice little device and I actually have their four in one as well by my bed. That's just how dedicated I am to wireless charging. Here in the center, we've got the Loop Deck Live console. I actually did a full review on the Loop Deck Live. I'll put it somewhere up here in the top of the video. But the Loop Deck Live is an awesome little device that you can use to interface with Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, Twitch, whatever the case may be. It's got some knobs on it, some buttons, um, some touch screen buttons, and really it just lets you customize whatever you need. So if you wanna color grade with the dials, you can do that. If you wanna use it while you're Twitch streaming and you know pop up your chat or whatever, you could do that as well. It's a great nifty little device, and I love having it here. It just makes everything easy to access. Over on this end, holding my iPad Pro is the Grove Made iPad Pro holder. It's actually a nice little stand. I really, really love the quality of this thing. Um, it's very sturdy and it makes it really easy to just set my iPad down. I can use my iPad as a secondary monitor or I can just use it to edit photos with. I edit all of my photos on the iPad Pro. It's my favorite way to edit photos. So having the iPad Pro here on this stand just makes it really easy to access. And if I'm not using it, I could just pull up Slack or Gmail or my calendar just at a glance to see what I've got going on. In the back here, we've got the Grove Made headphone stand. Uh, the headphones are actually not on it. The, the video guy behind the camera right now is, is wearing them, but I use these to hold my Sony WH-1000XM3s. I don't use them as often as I'd like to admit because I do typically use the AirPods Pro now that this is a MacBook Pro docking station, but it is a great place to keep my Sonys and it matches the vibe really well. Over here on the left hand side, I've got the Canon EOS M50. I pretty much keep this here so that when I'm doing Zoom meetings, Google Meet meetings, whatever, I can have a high quality camera. And then I've got the Fifine microphone here that I've actually done a review of as well and I'll throw that up at top. These are both sitting on some cheap boom arms. Uh, these are basically microphone stand arms, but I've kind of converted one of them into holding the camera and then the other one is holding the microphone. The one thing I do not have for this setup is a chair. I'm actually waiting on a chair right now. I kind of use the chair that I have on the gaming setup back and forth. Sometimes I'll pull the dining room chair out here. I am waiting on my chair. That's kind of the last piece of this setup to bring it all together. Yo, future Spencer here. Uh, you probably realized that in the thumbnail there was a chair. As a matter of fact, I'm sitting in a chair right now. Well, the reason is because this was such a massive filming project for me that by the time I finally got around to editing it, I actually got a chair from Autonomous. It's the Ergo Chair 2, but I haven't had a chance to try it enough to really throw it in this video. So just know that I finally have a chair for the Cabin Fever setup, but I'll do another video on it soon. That's it. Enjoy the programming, the rest of the video, whatever. Overall, I really like the look and I'm looking forward to building onto it more as time progresses this year. I've gotten a lot of good feedback on this setup and if you're interested in any of the stuff that I've mentioned, the links will be in the description below. But that's pretty much it for the Cabin Fever setup. So let's head over to the Stormtrooper gaming and streaming setup. So you probably recognize this desk if you saw the 2020 desk setup tour, but fittingly I moved this desk over here in front of the Stormtrooper and Mandalorian poster and as such we went ahead and named this setup the Stormtrooper because it is primarily black and white, it's got a very good monochromatic look and there is a bunch of Star Wars decor here from the Darth Vader to the Stormtrooper to the Mandalorian and I'm a huge Star Wars fan. What hasn't changed is the desk. I am still using the Autonomous Smart Desk 2. It is a great desk. It hasn't given me any issues. The motor is fairly quiet, but I love the ability to use a sit-stand desk even when I'm gaming because sometimes when I'm gaming, my back starts to hurt. Doesn't matter if I'm sitting in a good chair or a bad chair, sitting 
for prolonged periods of time just tends to hurt my back. So having the ability to stand up and sit down is fantastic. One thing that did change is the monitor. Late last year, I ordered two of the Dell U2718Qs so that I could add them to my work from home setup. Unfortunately, one of the panels was bad. I do think it was a one-off situation. It had an older manufacturing date, but regardless, I decided to just return the Dell and get something new. So I got the LG 27UL550. Now, before you go looking into this monitor, that monitor is not the one you see here. When I connected it to the PS5, which we'll talk about in a second, and I enabled HDR, it had a really warm yellow tint to it. Turns out the HDR on that monitor wasn't that great. Fortunately, a guy on Instagram told me to try out the 650, so I returned the 550, ordered the 27UL650, and beautifully enough, this monitor is perfect for gaming and the HDR works amazing with the PS5. It is only HDR400 certified, not HDR10, but that is no issue with me. This monitor is extremely bright and the colors look beautiful. Well done to LG for this. What I will say though is it does not have automatic HDMI switching, which is a little bit annoying. If I switch between my PS5 and my PC, I do have to go in manually and switch the HDMI input, which isn't a great thing to do. It's kind of annoying. It's time suck. It's a time waste, whatever you want to call it. But I'll get over it. It's fine. Overall, the monitor is beautiful. The bezels are thin. I love it. So let's talk about the PS5. 2020, 2021, everyone is trying to get their hands on this game console and I was fortunate enough to get it. I was a member of the Telegram channel from nounstock.net and they notified me that Best Buy had a drop coming up. I went on, I work from home, so fortunately I was able to keep an eye on it all day long. And about midday, four hours after the drop was supposed to happen, I was finally able to secure the PS5. This is the disc free edition so it is the console without a disc and I, i'm impressed with this thing i'm going to do an entire separate video on the ps5 itself but nothing could have happened and fallen into place more perfectly than the ps5 in this desk setup i did not intentionally build this setup around the ps5 but when i did get it and i moved it over here it just fit in perfectly with the monochromatic Stormtrooper theme. There is not a lot of setups that a PS5 can look good in, and I'm proud to say that it looks great <laughs> in this one. We do have the PC over here. This is the same exact PC as last year with the same exact specs, with one exception. The only thing that has changed is I changed out the Intermax air cooler for this liquid cooler from Deep Cool. I'm getting a lot better temperatures and I was able to get a stable five gigahertz overclock out of the i5-9600K. In addition, the white light on the AIO cooler looks really cool, it matches with the whole theme. I'm really happy with it. One thing that I do need to do now soon is update the 1060 in here because it's not doing well with my games and streaming at the same time but that will come in due time. Because this is not the gaming station, I did want some speakers for this setup, and I went with something super cheap and efficient that works really well. These are the Logitech Z313s. They were about 30 bucks. I picked them up from Best Buy. They're a great option. They sound good. It comes with a subwoofer. I couldn't really have asked for anything better. I didn't want to go too complex. I didn't want to make an extremely large purchase for something so simple. I can definitely recommend these speakers. I think they're great speakers and it works really well in this setup. They sound good and sometimes I even annoy my girlfriend with them. This is the Lametric Smart Clock. I get questions about this all the time on Instagram, on TikTok, everywhere I post content that has this desk in it, people always ask about this. This is a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi smart clock. It allows you to track your YouTube sub counts, your Instagram follower count, your Twitch streams, all of that stuff. It allows you to add custom messages. I've actually added some that say Trooper to match the whole Stormtrooper theme. It's a great little device. It's expensive. It's over $200, which is kind of jaw dropping, especially considering that it's a speaker and the speaker sounds like trash, but it is a novelty item. I enjoy having it here. It gets a lot of attention and I think it looks great in the setup. For the keyboard, we are using the Royal Kludge RK61. This has not changed. I love this keyboard. It is a 60% mechanical keyboard with blue switches. It's so compact and it sounds so good. I, I haven't found another keyboard to replace it yet just because of how much I love it. It's got some neat little designs too with the backlight. If you flip between this key, first you have to turn it on. If you flip between the different backlight modes, you can see it does waves and all kinds of different fancy effects. 
I just really love the keyboard. It sounds good, it's functional, and it matches the setup really well. As I mentioned earlier, we are rocking the Logitech MX Master 2S. It magically teleported from that setup to here. And again, it's a very functional mouse. I picked it up because I like the way it feels, I like the way it looks, and it works really well. Underneath the keyboard and mouse, we have this felt desk mouse pad. It was a cheap one that I picked up on Amazon. I like it because of its size. It doesn't take too much of the desk up, but it does add a little contrast and gives a little place for my keyboard and mouse to sit. Again, if you wanna check this stuff out, the links will be in the description below. For the house plants, these are actually faux house plants that I got from Target. There are some that look like them on Amazon. I can't vouch for their quality. I don't know if Target still sells these, but when I saw them, I immediately picked them up because I like that they have a white base and I thought it'd go good with this desk setup. In the back here, I have the industrial desk lamp. A lot of people ask about this too. Pick this up on Amazon. This hasn't changed. This was in last year's setup. And I do have a custom dimmer switch underneath the desk that allows me to dim the light because a lot of times when I'm doing videos or things like that, it's way too bright so I can dim this. It does not have a dimmer included. So that is something that you should keep in mind. For the chair, I am using the GTP Office Gaming Chair. This is just a cheap chair that I found on Amazon. It's held up to date. This was in last year's setup tour as well. I am looking to add a different chair, obviously, to my work from home setup, but as of now, this chair works just fine in this setup. And again, it matches the black and white Stormtrooper theme. It's a great little chair, not too expensive. I'm not gonna say it's the most comfortable out there, but it gets the job done. Last but not least, we have the Stormtrooper and Mandalorian posters. Everyone asks me where I got these. I got these on Amazon and unfortunately, I believe this one is no longer available. They've kind of switched out the colors on it, at least from what I can tell in the preview picture. This one is solid black and white. The other one is kind of a bluish and black hue. I don't know if you can find this specific poster anywhere else, but they are framed with two frames from Michaels and I think they look great on the wall and they look great in the setup overall. All right, so that wraps up the 2021 dual desk setup tour. Let's go ahead and get this desk back up by pressing this button, like you should press the like button. As always, if you enjoy videos like this, please subscribe to the channel, throw me a comment below, let me know what your favorite part of this desk setup was, or let me know which one you like better, Cabin Fever or the Stormtrooper. If you wanna check out anything that I mentioned in this video, there will be links in the description below. Follow me on Instagram at the Spencer Ryan to see much, much more tech content and see these desks on almost a daily basis because I do post them often. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, I will catch you on the next video.